Welcome to the Brainiate Show, where we talk about all things Salesforce, sharing the coolest features, solutions, and best practices to turn you into a Salesforce rock star. Here's your host, former attorney turned Salesforce consultant, trainer, and MVP, David Giller. In this episode, we hear from Ohad Idan, who shares his unique experience getting introduced to the Salesforce platform through the perspective of process improvement, which I found particularly impactful. Ohad shares some of his insight on the huge impact he's had on business operations through his knowledge and expertise on the Salesforce platform. Welcome, Ohad Idan, to the Brainy H Show podcast. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, so for those of you who don't know Ohad, Ohad Idan is one of the co-leaders for the New York City Developer User Group. He has been working in the Salesforce platform for the last seven years, having earned five Salesforce certifications. Some of you might have met Ohad at the New York City World Tour, where he recently presented at the Javits Center. Ohad, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you went from being in the Israeli army to becoming a Salesforce rock star. <laughs> um, well, um, as you indicated, I was born and raised in Israel, um, and in Israel everybody, of course, has to go to the army mm -hmm. and serve a mandatory three years. Uh, when I finished my army service, I decided to try and come to the U.S., so um, I came here, I went through my pace through going through different uh, jobs, and then mm -hmm. uh, uh, landed about ten years ago a job at my current company. Mm -hmm. Um, and then about seven years ago, I, uh, I got into the, uh, the Salesforce world, and uh, my life has changed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, how you even got first introduced to Salesforce as a tool, what, and what were your first impressions? What happened? So my, my, uh, my um, beginning story is kind of uh, interesting. One day I uh, was minding my own business at work, and... My boss called me, I picked up the phone, and he said to me, um, Ohad, have you ever heard of Salesforce? And my response to him was, sales what? <laughs> he said, Salesforce. He said, I've never heard of it. What is it? Mm -hmm. He said, I have no clue, but it's now your problem. <laughs> <laughs> so this is pretty much how I was handed the keys to Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, our company just went through... Um, an acquisition of another company that was using Salesforce, and the person that was managing it um, uh, resigned, and so they needed somebody to pick it up, and my boss decided it would be me. And so, you know, the first few months mm -hmm. uh, of managing Salesforce for me was pretty much the most mundane, uh, basic ad admin tasks, uh, creating new fields, modifying pick list values, mm -hmm. creating or disabling users, um, but then several months into the into that uh, role, uh, we decided that we are going to migrate our company's CRM also into Salesforce, and we hired a partner to help us with that migration, and that was really where I consider my, my Salesforce uh, experience really started uh, exploding. Because you probably started uh, learning it the right way from experienced people with some guidance versus running to YouTube and Google. Yeah, I, I find that I learn usually best from uh, from playing with something. So mm -hmm. it was really the moment where I started to have to go through and check what, what the partner did. And then I was like, oh, wait, what does this button do? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is how I started suddenly realizing all of the capabilities of the platform. And, of course, seven years ago, there were much uh, a smaller list of capabilities than there is today. But it was still a, a pretty eye-opening experience for me. Um, and what, what, I, what I suddenly noticed is that the tool really gives me the, the capability to take some uh, processes that our business has that are externally manual, uh, you know, either an email for approval or, you know, a topic that gets kind of discussed on, on email and never gets uh, resolved or uh, stacks of paper that move from one table to another mm -hmm. um, to, you know, basically gather signatures and gather more pieces of paper to get attached to them. Those were all things that I, I hated in, in how our business um, operated. Mm -hmm. And so my, my role at the time, actually, so just like many other people, Salesforce was given to me as a side gig. It was never designed to be my full-time job. It's just, hey, 10% of your time should be going to managing Salesforce. Right. My actual job was uh, in process improvement. 
so my it was kind of a, a, like a you know a serendipity moment That's right. where my job is to go to different departments in the company and ask them okay what what can we improve about your processes to make them better, to make it more efficient, to make it easier for you to manage your processes? And suddenly I was given a tool like Salesforce. That's, you know, that's pretty remarkable uh, because <laughs> in, in really in, in most companies that I'm familiar with uh, that, that are using Salesforce, Salesforce is typically owned by either IT, sometimes marketing, sometimes sales, sometimes sales operations, sometimes the COO, but as it relates to process improvement and change management, um, it makes, to me, it makes complete sense, uh, but th this is the first that I'm hearing of that type <laughs> of scenario, and like, even for me, com you know, coming from the world of GE, and uh, when, I, when I was first introduced to, uh, to the world of GE, I was basically told, uh, in GE, we operate with this uh, methodology called Six Sigma when it comes to process mm -hmm. improvement and re-engineering processes, and you need to get Six Sigma certified. I had no clue what on earth it meant. Not only the term Six Sigma, right. I was oblivious to. I had no clue what it meant as it related to as it related to process improvement and change management and and the the understanding even the definition of quality and quality control um, until like I was really exposed to that world. And now that you mention it, not only does it make complete sense, that's probably the smartest way to... Well, oh, for us, it was just a happy accident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really. Still, it's, it's but... Sometimes that's, that's where uh, genius uh, things arise. <laughs> that's yeah, right. agreed, agreed. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So tell me so, a little bit. Of, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. No, I was just going to say. So, so in that this, in that role of uh, process improvement, I had uh, an amazing um, opportunity to to really learn what can be done. So what I did was basically start picking up processes that I thought were extremely uh, painful. For example, our uh, order entry process. So a customer would send us orders in in a myriad of ways, anywhere from faxes to emails to uh, um, calls to a, to a program manager, to a salesperson. And it was really difficult for us to maintain where that was happening. So what I would do is I would learn the process. I would kind of come up with a, with a design of how we can imp in implement that process in Salesforce, um, create some reports, some dashboards. And only at that point I would go to my department heads and I would say, hey, guys, I would like to sit with you and talk about potentially moving a process into Salesforce. And so we'd have this meeting, and I would present to them what I did, um, and you know I would say, hey, you know, this is how I thought it would happen. And normally they would tell me, yeah, this is great, but here we would do it a little different, differently. And so I would take notes. Um, but the, the my favorite moment in every one of those meetings, and I had probably about ten or fifteen of those meetings with different department heads. Mm -hmm. My favorite moment was always the moment when they would say, that looks great. Can you tell us a little bit about the time to develop this? How long is it going to take us? What is going to be the cost to develop this? And that's the moment where I had the wow factor and I was able to just tell them, no, 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 no. What I just showed you is it. It's right. done. It's developed. Right. All you need to do is submit a requisition for most Salesforce licenses right. and you can have that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's usually where the mouth drops and, you know, I had this uh, <laughs> amazing reaction from people and... You know, when I inherited my Salesforce org, I had about 30 users, which was basically sales and customer service only. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of years, we've got to about 80 or 90 users and people that were using the platform almost on a daily basis. So just doing this and finding right. ways to take business processes from the company and put them on the platform just provided an amazing amount of value for the company. Yeah, cause, because it, it helps transform the company not only from uh, conceptually, okay, here's the new process that we can uh, we can consider, we might uh, choose to implement one day, but uh, here's also the technology that was also already configured to support or even automate the process that we're talking about. So if you're good with yep. it, we're live. If you don't like it, we can easily delete whatever new functionality we're talking about. 
it's yeah, exactly. It, it, it's a, a fantastic way to accelerate dramatic change for any organization. That's awesome. Thank you. Cool stuff. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so tell me a little bit about, uh, we mentioned before, you're a leader for the developer user group in New York, in New York City. Tell us a little bit about the developer user group as a whole. What does it mean, a developer user group? Some people might have never heard of a, they might have heard of Salesforce user groups in general. What on earth is a developer user group? How is it different from another type of user group? And also even how you got involved in the user group in the first place. So to those who don't know this, Salesforce user groups are a great uh, resource that is available to, in most uh, major localities, uh, definitely in large cities. And so in New York City, of course, being one of the greatest cities in the world, we have a lot of communities uh, that are aimed at different audiences. Uh, there's the user group, there's the financial service user group, there's women in tech, there is uh, Pardot user group, and of course we have the developer user group. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the developer user group in New York City is really to cater content um, and a com create a community for developers uh, on the Salesforce platform or for people who want to become developers. And so to that purpose, to that end, we have meetups that we uh, meet in New York City, uh, and you can find information about it on meetup.com. Just search for New York City Developer User Group. Uh, so we have meetups in New York City. We have uh, webinars where we teach administrators how, uh, who are interested in becoming developers. We teach them how to become developers. Um, and we just try to kind of create and foster a sense of community so people have uh, a place where they feel comfortable coming and asking questions or getting guidance or just talking in about what uh, what they like or don't like about the platform. So typically the what happens when people get together in the developer user group? Is everyone sitting at a computer developing their own stuff and comparing, <laughs> looking over each other's shoulders or what? So we have, uh, you know, we have normally content that we present. So we have either one of our, one of the leaders um, present some content or we have a guest uh, a developer from Salesforce or from somewhere else that presents some, some new concept or some uh, implementation of a solution. And so it's more of a, uh, you know, kind of like a presentation mode. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what I've done. This is how I've done it. This is the technology and, of course, open questions. Mm -hmm. And normally in those meetups, we also uh, do a couple of other things. One is the uh, infamous uh, user group therapy, mm -hmm. which is a, a concept I was uh, introduced to by uh, Sheryl Feldman, mm -hmm. uh, where we basically let people sit in a group in a, in a circle and um, and bring up things that they they are frustrated with uh, or just have not been able to find a solution and see if others in the group can just uh, um, can share anything that helps them you know, resolve their frustration. Mm -hmm. um, and the third thing that we do is what we like to call the trailhead hike, group hike, mm -hmm. where we pick up some uh, uh, advanced uh, development trailhead and we just go through it as a group and explain the, compl the concepts of uh, what is done there and really kind of go into the uh, details or provide any feedback or comment um, on best uh, practices or why why something is done in a specific way. That's great. And uh, typically how many people, uh, or if there's a range of how many people typically show up at least to the New York City developer user group? I think that overall we have probably between 40 and 60 or 70 people on average in that group. Mm -hmm. Um, but then again, as I said, we many times we'll split into uh, separate right, right. groups Subgroups. doing the different activities so people can choose uh, what they want to participate in. That's awesome. So how did you become a, a user group leader? How did that happen? So when I, um, when I started using Salesforce, I, I absolutely had no clue that this community even exists. Um, and I think it was probably a, a couple of years or almost a couple of years after I really got involved with Salesforce that suddenly I became aware this thing exists. Mm -hmm. And so I started coming to the uh, uh, standard Salesforce user group meetups in New York City. Mm -hmm. And um, I started making connections. I started talking with people and becoming uh, you know, more familiar with the faces in the community. And I, I started to realize I'm getting tremendous value from this uh, from this community. I mean, I was, every time I went to a community meetup, I would come back to my office with a list of notes and ideas of, wow, I can implement something like this in my company, or I can do, I can improve this by doing something that I just learned about. Um, mm -hmm. And just talking with people, you know, and seeing what other people are doing in, in their roles or in their companies was 
to me really like eye opening. It was an experience that that I tremendously enjoyed every time there was a meetup. And so I started I started to become more involved. I was looking for ways to uh, to help and uh, organize and mm -hmm. um, you know just answer questions because by that time I was already becoming you know a pretty knowledge knowledgeable person uh, and I had a lot to share with others. Mm -hmm. um, so I really you know I wanted kind of to repay what I gained from the community to to people who are new. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, uh, Luke Kushanik, who is uh, uh, the original uh, New York City developer group leader, uh, wanted to start um, um, uh, running these uh, uh, Apex workshop classes that we now run as a webinar. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he was basically looking to teach admins how to become developers. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, I, uh, did, I, I went through the journey myself. I started as an admin and I kind of taught myself how to develop. And I figured that you know I would love to be a part of it, and so I started helping him run those classes, and that kind of naturally grew to the point where he said, "Listen, you're already helping me run all this. Why why don't you become an official co-leader in the group?" And that happened. <laughs> wow, wow, that that's great. Um, yeah, I, I I talk to people all the time about uh, the user groups in general and my involvement in the user groups, and it's really not, nothing but a, a positive experience. As a user group leader, sometimes it can feel like a little bit of a part-time job. The the logistics of Absolutely. getting together, the the you know everything of having the user group meeting take place, the 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 agenda, the logistics of the location, refreshments, telling people that it's coming, RSVP. It's yeah, incredibly rewarding. It's great stuff. I, I think I think that many people don't even realize that uh, you know that our, we lead, we 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 do this job because we really feel like these communities provide real value to people in the community, and and we want to create this sense of community. We want to belong to a community, but people don't realize that this is all volunteer work. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, it's funny, it you know. just came up yesterday. So last night we had, uh, th this episode is being recorded uh, February the 9th, uh, at Thursday, the February the 9th. And just last night we had the New Northern New Jersey user group meeting uh, in Parsippany, New Jersey. And it was hosted by Wyndham Worldwide. They were gracious enough to host us in their headquarters, which was a, a pretty magnificent experience. The the team over there at Wyndham definitely they definitely know the hospitality industry. Uh, we had <laughs> Ma Michael Lupino presenting on best practices regarding how different groups from L'Oreal has moved over to Lightning Experience. And we had mm -hmm. uh, a team from Squid showcasing uh, what Squid is all about and how different companies are leveraging Squid to um, put their own candy wrapper of a UI on Salesforce. And within the user group, the, just within the attendees uh, that we had yesterday, that, that same message just resonated throughout, which is, the, you know, this is, it's about you guys and it's about you connecting with each other. It's about us as user group leaders, simply facilitating, bringing everyone together in order to share those ideas because everyone benefits from a career perspective, from yeah. a solving problems perspective. And I had so many people in the, most of the people in the room, and by the way, most of the attendees come from, there is a sprinkling throughout of different industries and different sizes of companies, but turns out maybe it's because it was sort of suburban New Jersey uh, that we had a lot of representation from very, very large companies that are not using Lightning. And after listening to Mike Lupino talking about Lightning experience at L'Oreal, they all turned to me saying, oh my God, this was so tremendously helpful for me because now I can go back to the office and I can speak intelligently and with confidence about some things mm -hmm. regarding Lightning that I've only learned vicariously through tonight's experience. Exactly. I mean, to me, the, the original value, the reason that I got involved was just exactly that. Exactly that. Mm -hmm. Going in there and saying, okay, I'm so focused on doing, doing things my own way and so focused on the projects that I, I'm working on that a lot of times you just are not aware what others can be doing or what you could be doing yeah. uh, with the platform. And so just going and, and experiencing what – because Salesforce will always try to sell you the next big, great thing, right? So you, right. you always take it kind of with a grain of salt. Right. Um, and there's only that much capacity you can do. But by going and seeing what others are actually doing, uh, 
-hmm. that's usually for me like the wait a second people are actually doing this and it looks <laughs> phenomenal yeah. let me let me let me look into this it's worth okay. it because I, I can a lot of time envision exactly how I'll use it Mm -hmm. and also you can ask them very candidly, how painful was it for you to do that, or what were the <laughs> troublesome spots, or you know, give me the give me the uh, the learning experiences that you've had, so that this way I can benefit from it, or maybe even can you share with me the checklist, the the project plan that you've used that I can borrow to implement for within my own company. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, amazing stuff. So t tell me a little bit about. Uh, so we talked about like. Pro solving specific business problems on the Salesforce platform and even within your own role from a process improvement uh, perspective and, and how to implement within Salesforce some of the process improvements uh, that you've identified. Tell me a little bit more about how you are leveraging Salesforce, if you have any examples that you can share, to streamline uh, some business processes throughout the organization because we chatted earlier and you were you were explaining to me how uh, within the organization that you're currently working with, Salesforce is embedded throughout wing to wing. I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about so, that. Yeah, so you know, as I as I started saying over the years, I've I've really implemented a lot of different processes and took processes the business doing um, and moved them into Salesforce, and it got to the point where everybody in the company. Um, if they, even if they weren't Salesforce users, they knew of Salesforce. Mm -hmm. And everything that people asked for, I was always able to deliver. I mean, everybody that is a Salesforce user knows how easy it is to create new functionality, new custom object, right. uh, you know, new page layout, new uh, process flow, and you, you're basically implemented in a brand new process in, in, uh, in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So people were already very familiar with the fact that if they can just... If, if they can ask me something and I have the time to work on it, I can implement that in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we were already using Salesforce pretty, pretty heavily a couple of years ago. And at that point, uh, we were going through um, an evaluation of uh, an ERP replacement. So, so to those who don't know, an ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. And it's basically a, um, a definition that describes applications that run uh, operational businesses, so they control and manage things like inventory, orders, purchasing, uh, and even accounting, and you know a bunch of other manufacturing and other other things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, to take a very long story and make it very short, we ended up deciding to uh, to go on with a, a Salesforce-based ERP solution, uh, which is an app exchange. Uh, company called Rootstock, um, mm -hmm. and so you know we've gone through a whole selection process, and we evaluated a bunch of different solutions on and off the platform, and we ended up selecting them. And so we've gone through a very um, lengthy implementation process where we took all of these different things that we were doing in an on-premise application and moved them into, excuse me, into Salesforce. Um, and so. You know, our go live was January of 2016, so about uh, 13, almost 14 months ago. Um, and I can tell you that now, even though, of course, the go live was challenging, like any any go live can be. Um, today, we basically run our entire back office on on Salesforce. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you imagine, of course, the things that everybody familiar that Salesforce does is the pre-sales, right? The leads, the opportunities, mm -hmm. and and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, it doesn't end there. So once the order gets received, it actually gets loaded as a sales order in in Rootstock, which really is a Salesforce application, right? So it gets loaded there. Um, it goes into the fulfillment uh, department from there, so they can manage their inventory, their purchasing. All of this is done from Salesforce. So we would generate a purchase order, would send it to our vendors, uh, would fulfill sales orders, um, and then you know, everything beyond that, of course, once the sales order is there, we have recurring billing for monthly charges, monthly, monthly bills, um, our accounting, so that's the accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger, and everything revolving around that is also running on the platform. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, beyond that, we have the standard Salesforce um, customer service module, and we use Service Cloud, of course. Um, and... We also have partner community, customer community. We have wow. a, 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 a hybrid 
um, mobile app that runs on iOS and Android uh, for customers using the, like, the customer community licenses. So it's, a, it's a, an extremely, extremely um, um, extensive implementation of Salesforce. And I think that with the exception of our actual product and the actual application that the customer used to, to use our product, everything else that the business does today is largely done in Salesforce. Wow. Wow, that's uh, taking a really impressive holistic view and putting all of the different components in a consolidated centralized database, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been a long road, don't get me wrong. It's not, right, it right. has not been an easy process. Um, I, I think that it really comes down to the, to the fact that I was able to demonstrate to the business um, that this tool is really phenomenal because for the first four years that I was managing Salesforce, I was managing it myself. I was the only Salesforce resource in the company and I was able to deliver such tremendous value to the company. And it's not because I'm so special, it's because really the tools that Salesforce allows you to, to it gives you to, to create all this functionality are phenomenal. And so, you know, I was able to deliver all this value by myself where other, other departments have, That's right. uh, you know, teams of people working on projects of, of this scale. Mm -hmm. And so once the company had the confidence that the tool, the tool and the platform are reliable enough and that it gives us really the, the strength to customize really quickly and to iterate on, on requirements and projects so quickly, um, you know, the, they, they, they had enough confidence to, to take the next step, which was the, the whole ERP project. And, you know, today I have a team uh, of two administrators that report to me and two developers that report to me. Mm -hmm. And we just continue to deliver new functionality all the time. We continue to improve how we do business and we continue to, to do all of that. You know, you bring up an excellent point, which is, uh, you know, it, it, it sort of it re not only resonates, it emphasizes the point that you made earlier with regard to the, the speed and... Um, the speed with which we can deliver, anyone really can deliver solutions on the Salesforce platform, um, it really does not require a massive team for, and most people find this incredibly surprising, especially those with extensive IT background or IT project management yep. or I operate, uh, IT operations support background, uh, where uh, we've become used to having a very large team to support um, a, a large organization, and with Salesforce, uh, you really don't need more than a skeleton crew to support an enterprise-wide yeah. organization. And it's 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 a little bit of a culture shock for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I yeah. agree. I mean, it's uh, it's been for me, it's been uh, a really uh, fun, even though at times very stressful right. ride. But it's right. been a tremendous ex learning experience and. You know, I would not be where I am in the career today if I had not been, if I had not picked up that phone call when my boss called me and, and asked me if I know what Salesforce is, right? Right, right. And so, and so today we, we, you know, we, we actually, you know, we, we can develop a lot of functionality on our, on our own, mm -hmm. but we always prefer, if possible, to leverage existing app exchange apps that already do a lot of the things we want to do. Mm -hmm. So we actually leverage a bunch of uh, app exchange apps um, some of them people know, and some of them are free, and of course some of them are paid. So things like Field Trip that everybody loves, and you know other other free tools like that. Uh, but our complete solution actually revolves around a set of uh, of uh, you know fairly decent, uh, decently priced, I would say, solutions compared mm -hmm. to other solutions in the market that that come from the App Exchange. So you know I mentioned Rootstock that we use for ERP, and the Rootstock. Um, operates in tandem with Financial Force, mm -hmm. um, and so those are the main two applications we have. We use an application called uh, Shipmate from a company called Zancraft that allows mm -hmm. you to create shipping labels right out of mm -hmm. uh, Salesforce, so UPS, USPS, or FedEx labels, yep. and that also integrates with Rootstock. So when we want to ship an order, a button click and the label is there. Um, we use a tool called um, Email to Anything by a company called Or2. Yep. That basically allows you to replicate kind of the case to email, uh, email to case functionality on any kind of custom object you want. Mm -hmm. So that was a phenomenal tool uh, to get a long time ago. Today, of course, I can write my own uh, email handler classes, but again, sometimes when you just want to do it quickly, right. Right. you already have a tool that does that. Absolutely. Um, 
we use a backup solution. Uh, not everybody is aware that Salesforce uh, doesn't really provide you data backups unless you go and download the data every every week or every day. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's plenty of backup solutions on the App Exchange, and the one that we chose is a company called Own Backup, uh, mm -hmm. which provides a phenomenal backup service, um, cl also cloud-based on Amazon uh, servers, and at a very affordable rate with a really premium product solution. Um, and so we have, of course, a few other App Exchange apps when we use PodDot and we use Service Cloud and, and Sales Cloud. And, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been also, it has not not always been uh, easy to convince my management or executive team, especially in the beginning when right. it was early on to get all these other things because we're already right. paying so for sales. So right. Why do we need to? <laughs> right. That's uh, incredibly common. I, I'm faced with that challenge often where people say, no, I'm already paying so much for Salesforce. Why do I need another another app? Why isn't it baked into Salesforce? And I often tell them, well, think of it like a, a cell phone. When you go to the Verizon store and you pick up the latest, uh, latest version of an iPhone, you're paying a whole lot of money and it's got a whole lot of very robust, impressive functionality. Before you even turn it on, you know that it's a really powerful tool. But what does everyone do? The first mm -hmm. thing after they turn it on, they start downloading apps. Why? Because we're look everyone is looking to further expand the functionality based on their own preferences, what it is that they need, yep. photo editing or social me media management, whatever it might be. Um, those apps are not baked into the product because not every single person needs the exact same apps. And I, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great uh, analogy, even though I'm an Android person, but uh, <laughs> yeah. still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still held true. It's all good. Agreed, agreed. So let me tell you, uh, I'm sorry, let me ask you, if you could have, uh, could share one piece of advice to someone who is relatively new to the Salesforce platform, what piece of advice would you share with them? What words of wisdom would you share with them based on the experiences that you've had, the successes that you've had, the pain, painful experiences that you've had? What would you share for that, uh, to that one person who's new to to the world of Salesforce, to the technology of Salesforce, and feeling a little bit overwhelmed and lost and confused? I, I would just say, you know, just play with it, first of all. I mean, you know, you have a sandbox, or if you don't, get, get a development environment, and just start doing things. Find ways in your own business um, to find problems that maybe people don't even know that uh, uh, there's solutions out there. So, I mean, I can't stress it enough. Just pick up something and try to see how do I solve this in, in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I think that the best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself, right? You can do a million trailheads, which I'm a big fan of and I would recommend everybody to do, but still, you can do a million trailheads. You can watch a, a thousand webinars, listen to a million podcasts, mm -hmm. um, but in the end of the day, somebody asks you to do something and you will be like, uh, I don't know how to start. Right. And until you do it yourself, you won't know. Yeah. And once you do it yourself, you also start to think about things a little bit differently and you start to see things that you didn't even think of before. When you, when you implement something, you say, wait a second, I can actually take that functionality and use it also here. Or if I just modified it slightly, it would work better for my business. Mm -hmm. And so just pick it up and start running with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that with Salesforce, what's really phenomenal is that the sky really is the limit. There's really very little you can imagine doing that you can't do with the platform. Right. And there's definitely, you know, limits to what you can do as an administrator before you need to write some code and do right. development. Right. But that limit is, is you know, that, that line is extremely high compared to other platforms and other right. applications. So there's still a whole lot of things you can do even as an administrator without writing one line of code. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's great advice. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, so... I do. I come. I appreciate having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for it's joining us. I will also tell not only you but also the listeners that uh, I'm going to include in the show notes for this episode. I'm going to include the links to all of the different uh, apps on the App Exchange that Ohad uh, that you mentioned. I'm also going to provide a link for the New York City Developer User Group for people that want to join and explore it further. So we're, we'll have links to the user group the developer user group, field trip, rootstock, financial force, shipmate, email to anything, and own backup. Did I skip anything? 
No, and I'll I'll make sure to send you if, uh, a list of the Epic Change apps that I have. So there you, can you go. That. Super. Thank you so much. Anyway, Ohad, thanks again. Uh, it, this has been great. I'm sure that our, uh, my listeners are going to find your insights and wisdom helpful and insightful, insightful as well. And I'm looking forward to having you again on the uh, on the podcast sometime in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Brainiate Show. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to any resources referenced in this podcast. Also, don't forget to head over to Brainiate.com to subscribe to The Brainiate blog, where I regularly share Salesforce-related tips and tricks to help you become a Salesforce rock star.